evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. I have insomnia. Couldn't sleep for years. For years, I couldn't sleep. Never really understood why. Stay up all night, mind turning, trying to figure out how I can use my life to best help people, to best serve the community. Why? Because that's how I was raised. I was raised right here in Danville, Virginia. I graduated from high school in 1995 from Laurel Park High School in Martinsville, Virginia. I was a basketball star. Both of my parents were educators. I attended two historically black colleges and universities, Johnson C. Smith University and Shaw University. My upbringing, magnificent. My experiences growing up as a child, magnificent. So why couldn't I sleep? What was so hard about sleeping at night? Because I was raised to be a servant. I was raised to care about people. I was raised by educators. That's right, both of my parents were school teachers. My father was my basketball coach in high school. I watched them year after year after year pour their soul into their students and in their, into their community. No matter what the cost, no matter how much time had to be spent, I watched them dedicate themselves over and over and over again. And so as I got older and began to try to pursue a career, still couldn't sleep, could never find my niche. It wasn't until this moment, my family. This is the moment I started to get some rest. I met my beautiful wife. I began to have children, raise a family. And then I decided, wow, OK, now it's time to pour back into the community. But how? Well, it started at church. Every Sunday, as my family and I lived in Raleigh, North Carolina, we would travel back to Danville, Virginia to go to church. Same little church that I grew up in every Sunday. And I noticed at church that the children that were coming to Sunday school, the children that were within the church, I noticed that they appeared to be struggling a little bit more than kids in urban metropolitan areas. I noticed that their opportunities were much more slim. I noticed that their dreams and how far they saw themselves going in life was limited. Now, it's a caveat to my existence on Earth. In life, sometimes you're purely born into things. I was born into this legacy. Wendell Scott is my grandfather. He is the only African American team owner and race car driver to compete full time in NASCAR's highest division. Jacksonville 200, December 1st, 1963, 57 years ago, he becomes the first African-American team owner and driver to win a race by running two laps more than the rest of the field. March 4th, 1961, 60 years ago, was Wendell Scott's first NASCAR start. Truly trendsetting. Those who are from the Danville area, from the Danville region, knew this man very well. They spent time with this man. They saw him at the local restaurants. They saw him at local high school basketball games or sporting events, ribbon cuttings, or just simply to take your car to Mr. Wendell to get it fixed. The stories I have in my mind are when my grandfather would fix people's cars around Christmas time, knowing that they did not have the money to pay them, to pay him for his services. I remember it very well. I remember him charging families two hot dogs for my possums and a Pepsi Cola for overhauling the entire transmission. I, I heard stories of him reaching in his pocket to give families uh, money during Christmas time, even though he really didn't have it. My father once asked him, Daddy, why would you give that lady money when you know, you know, we kind of don't have it either? You know, mama gonna get mad when you get home. And his response was, I can get more, she can't. That's my spirit, y'all. That's my recipe. I do things because I believe in myself. I couldn't sleep because God put something in my heart that wouldn't allow me to sleep. And until I pursued my true vision, there was no sleep to be had. The Wendell Scott Foundation was born. If it's hard to do, do it today. 
if it's impossible, do it tomorrow. One of our family creeds, words we live by, words that can empower someone who, who appears to feel as though there is no hope. What does that have to do with youth? How do we transition Wendell Scott's legacy into everyday actual happenings? How do we transition his legacy into one that children can still almost feel it and touch it and see it, almost as if he is still here? That work was born through the Wendell Scott Foundation. The Wendell Scott Foundation is literally why I'm here on stage. It is a nonprofit that has been dedicated and designed to work with students that are of the most underserved and students that are of the most at risk persuasion. It is not color based, it's opportunity based. We've developed wonderful partnerships over the years with all types of entities that matter, like our Danville Public School System and our Martinville Henry County Public School System and our South Boston Halifax County Public School Systems. We've developed partnerships with research incubators like the Institute of Advanced Learning and Research or the New College Institute in Martinsville, Virginia. Facilities that are the leaders of research, facilities that are the leaders of technology. And then I decided with my wife's blessing one day that I wanted to relocate my family from Raleigh, North Carolina, of which I loved as far as a young man my age. I was at the top of the food chain, knew everybody, had everything, but I still couldn't sleep. Purpose, move back to Danville. Why? 2014, Danville was considered to be struggling. I lived in Danville when the mills were open, when they were thriving. The weekends were fun and amazing and exciting. These children here were not having that same experience. But I wanted to move somewhere where partnerships would be respected and far more executable. So we started programming. We moved back to, we moved back to Danville with the intent to mentor. Just to mentor. Just to be a helping hand. Just to guide in the right direction. What I found, mentoring wasn't readily funded, y'all. Nobody really wanted to provide any help for mentoring. It appeared to be a term that was stepped on. It appeared to be a term that had been misappropriated, if you will. And so now my whole vision, my whole dream that I've set up and built and predicated upon this mentoring opportunity, I'm getting tons of pats on the back because, hey, everybody loved Wendell Scott, but do you love the Wendell Scott Foundation? Do you love our programming? Do you see what we are trying to do? Some people saw it, most people saw it, but nonprofits survive off partnerships and funding. Anybody that's watching or listening that has a nonprofit, especially a small nonprofit, I implore you, I encourage you to continue to, to forge ahead and continue to look for partnerships. Look for entities that are thirsty and starving for partnerships and outreach, but that's for later in the presentation. So we, so we decided that we had to take the term mentoring and make it our own. And we had to create programming that would be unique to us. And so we came up with a term, you may hear it now, but I believe we were some of the first to come up with it was STEM education-based mentoring. What does that mean, Mr. Scott? Well, STEM education-based mentoring means is that we're not just gonna work with your child on soft skills within life. We're gonna plug your child into a program that will assist them in identifying their key factors in life. What are they talented at? Where are the resources? Where are the opportunities? And that's what our programming would do. And so people began to say, okay, STEM education, mentoring, kids got a cell phone in his pocket every day anyway, he stays with the phone in his hand. This could work. So we started our program with STEM-based exposure, steering the STEM, camp cultivation, Camp Cultivation was designed to provide students with a living experience to take place on a college campus for three days, sweet style living, where they learned STEM disciplines and STEM principles, all the while we were partnered with the United States Department of Agriculture in order to provide students 
with an opportunity to actually attend a secondary school or a university. In Virginia, we partnered with Virginia State University, which is a land grant institution and a historically black college. And we were able to take students there and give them a total college experience. Many students that attended received acceptance letters while they were still at camp. No student that attends our program and all our camps, when they leave, they do not come back the same. How they perceive life, how they perceive their opportunities are different. Why? Because we have brokered a relationship for those students with anyone we partner with before we ever bring the students around. Layman's terms, if you really, really don't love these kids, if you really, really don't love our community, need not apply. We learned that there was power in outreach. There was power in community-based outreach. And so because of that, you see our dynamic outcome measures, impactful change in attitude performance. These numbers we are proud of. These are the students that we serve. These are the students that received acceptance letters from Virginia State University during their stay. The Wendell Scott Foundation is now in its 10 years. This is our 10 year anniversary of doing this kind of work and providing this type of opportunities. And we did it here in Danville, a city that too many lack the ability to thrive. I stand here as a living witness that that is not true. I stand here as an example of someone who was raised here, born here, had great success in greater areas, but made a choice to return to where he was raised and reared to be amongst his true loved ones, which is, which is very important. Now, our future. What, what is in it for Wendell Scott? Well, one thing I want to say is that we hope to have a Wendell Scott Museum right here in downtown Danville where we can finally crystallize Wendell Scott's legacy, crystallize his intent and his impact, and have it housed right here where he was so proud to be from, which is Danville, Virginia. As a matter of fact, brought a little gift. This is Wendell Scott's official NASCAR Hall of Fame jacket that he earned during his career in NASCAR, 495 career starts, 147 top 10 finishes. This is, the, this is the intangible benefit of all this hard work. The Wendell Scott Museum would be able to house artifacts and the story of Danville and what we come from and how we made it. We made it through togetherness. We made it through community. We made it through partnerships, partnerships that can impact a child's life forever. By a show of hands, how many of you all ever attended a good summer camp as a child? So we can all agree by a show of hands that a good summer camp, a good after school program can change someone's life. Our intent is to change lives. My grandfather always said, out of all the places that he ever went, there's no place like home. I echo those thoughts. Thank you. Thank you.